What if I told you the most powerful computer in the world is inside your head? It controls your thoughts, your movements, your memories, even your weird dreams about showing up to school in your pajamas. In this video, we're covering topic 1.4 of unit one as we crack open the human brain and explore how its different parts work together to keep you alive, alert, and hopefully crush the AP Psych exam. So if you're ready, grab your notes, fire up those neurons, let's jump in. Before we dive into individual structures, here's a quick tour of the brain. No hiking boots needed, just a working prefrontal cortex. Your brain has two hemispheres, left and right. They each specialize in different functions, but work together. For example, the left hemisphere is primarily responsible for speech and language. AP Psych Memory Hack, think LL, language left. The two hemispheres are connected by a thick band of neural fibers called the corpus callosum. Think of it as your brain's Bluetooth, keeping the left and right sides paired up so they can work together without dropping the connection. And here's a cool fact. Each hemisphere controls the opposite side of the body. So your left hemisphere moves your right hand and your right hemisphere moves your left hand. This is called contralateral control. Contra is Latin for opposite and lateral is Latin for side. And they say Latin is a dead language. And see this wrinkly outer layer? That's the cerebral cortex. Your brain's thinking cap is where all your big ideas, plans, decisions, and overthinking happens. Here's an AP Psych fun fact. Do you know why your brain's wrinkled? All those folds and grooves increase the surface area, so you can pack more neurons into your skull without needing a brain the size of a beach ball. More wrinkles equals more brain power. To help make sense of all these structures, we're going to connect them to something you already understand. Driving a car. Fitting, since your brain spends all day steering your thoughts and actions. Sorry, I know. First stop, the brainstem. The part keeping you alive behind the scenes. It controls your basic life functions like breathing, heart rate, and staying conscious. You know, minor things like not passing out behind the wheel. It also acts as the highway between your brain and your spinal cord. So when your brain decides to slam on the brakes, the brainstem helps get the messages to your foot. One key part of the brainstem is the medulla, basically the control center for those automatic life functions is the one quietly managing your heartbeat and breathing while you're cruising down the road. Then there's a reticular activating system or RAS, a network of neurons also found within the brainstem. The RAS keeps you awake, alert, and focused. So you can actually pay attention to the exit you almost missed. All right, here's an AP Psych memory hack. Think RAS, rise and shine. In the back of the brain, you'll find this big old chunk called the cerebellum, your balance and coordination coach. It helps you stay balanced and smoothly coordinate your muscle movements. Like when you're driving and you need to steer, press the gas and check your mirrors all at once without swerving into a ditch. It's also key to procedural memory, skills you perform automatically like riding a bike, tying your shoes, or yes, driving a car without thinking too hard. Sure, breathing and staying awake are pretty important for driving. So is making smart decisions. Things like planning a route, reading a road sign, that's your cerebral cortex taking the wheel. As I stated previously, it's your brain's thinking cap, the wrinkly outer layer responsible for higher level functions like reasoning and problem solving. The cortex is divided into four main sections called lobes. The frontal lobe, temporal lobe, parietal lobe, and occipital lobe. The frontal lobe is located right behind your forehead. Think front of the brain. It's your decision maker while driving, helping you plan, focus, react, it also contains the primary motor cortex, which controls voluntary movements like turning the steering wheel or pressing the pedals. There's also a specialized region in the front of your frontal lobe called the prefrontal cortex. That controls executive functions, impulse control, empathy, and personality. Basically, the part that keeps you from screaming at every bad driver. It also includes the Broca's area, a key region for speech production. AP Psych Memory Hack. To remember Broca's area, think of the word boca, which means mouth in Spanish. So just remember, broca equals boca equals talking. The parietal lobe sits on top of your brain. It processes sensory information, touch, pressure, pain, so you can feel the steering wheel or the AC blasting on your face. It's also home to the primary somatosensory cortex, which maps out your brain sensations and association areas, which processes and coordinates information between different brain regions. The temporal lobe is located near your ears on the side of the brain. The temporal lobe handles auditory information, honks, sirens, inner GPS yelling, recalculating. 
It also includes the Wernicke's area, which helps you understand language. So you don't just hear a GPS, you actually know what it's telling you to do. AP Psych Memory Hack. Think tempo like the rhythm of music you listen to. It helps you remember that the temporal lobe processes sound. And finally, the occipital lobe at the back of your brain processes visual information. It receives information from your eyes. It would help you see the traffic light turning green or the squirrel darting in front of you. All right, now that we've toured the surface of the brain, let's pop the hood and look deeper. At the limbic system, your emotional and motivational center. These parts don't just help you survive, they help you feel, remember, and stay motivated. What parts will you find in the limbic system? The hippocampus, which helps you form new memories, like where you parked your car. The amygdala, which processes emotions like fear and aggression, like when someone cuts you off. The hypothalamus, which regulates things like hunger, thirst, and body temperature. It helps your body stay in homeostasis. Ever get hangry while stuck in traffic? Blame that guy. And the thalamus, your brain's sensory relay station. Think of it like a pit stop in NASCAR. Every bit of sensory information, except smell, passes through here to get fueled up and sent to the right part of the brain to be processed. These parts of the limbic system, especially the amygdala, hippocampus, and hypothalamus, show up repeatedly in AP Psychology. Whether you're learning about emotion, memory, motivation, or stress, these three are the brain's VIPs. So do yourself a little favor. Put a little check mark next to them in your notebook. They'll be making multiple appearances on the AP exam. But that raises a good question. How do psychologists even know what these parts do? We can't exactly just ask the brain what it's doing, right? Hey brain, what are you doing all day? But researchers use a combination of tools, surgeries, case studies, and even accidental injuries to figure out how different parts do what they do and how they work. For example, in rare cases of severe epilepsy, surgeons may cut the corpus callosum. If you remember, this is the connection between the brain's two hemispheres. This split brain research has taught us that the two sides of the brain often specialize in different tasks. The left hemisphere, for most people, is where you'll find the language centers, like the Broca's area, speech production, and Wernicke's area, speech comprehension. Damage to these areas can lead to a condition called aphasia, where a person struggles to speak or understand language. Psychologists have also learned a lot about the brain by studying what happens when it's damaged. And one of the biggest takeaways is that the brain is surprisingly adaptable thanks to something called neuroplasticity. If one part of the brain is damaged, another part can sometimes take over its job, especially in younger brains, which are better at making new connections and rewiring. And of course, modern tech has taken our understanding to the next level. Tools like EEGs, which track brain waves, and fMRIs, which measure brain activity by detecting changes in blood flow, less scientists observe what's happening inside the brain without actual surgery.